I love great conversations. Hi, my name is Angel Jones. Thank you for joining me on 12 Minute Convos where I help you create a brand of your own unique real self. Listen in as I have conversations with amazing people from all over the world. Good night, good night, Bo Humphreys. How are you going on this wonderful, beautiful night? I'm great. It's a great pleasure to connect with you, Bo. Bo, tell us, what part of the world are you in right now? I am in Canada, in uh, Hamilton, Ontario. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. So, please do tell us, up to now, the talent that you've been functioning in that is responsible for us connecting. Well, that would probably be my uh, personal finance uh, podcast, The Personal Finance Show. And uh, perhaps my website about personal finance, investwisely.ca. Yeah, great stuff there. So the podcast, ooh, it was, it was a bit, uh, how to, uh, so I felt really good today because I was listening to the last episode and um, Jessica Moore name came up, right? Jessica, uh, yeah, the yeah. payments race. Yeah, I was like, wow, because I inter- <laughs> I had a conversation with her uh, probably a few weeks ago, and yeah, listen ju- to that. It was oh, okay, okay. I was like, wow, um, wow, the power of a conversation. Well, yeah, I, I've known Jessica for a, a couple of, uh, I guess, a year perhaps or more. Yeah. yeah, yeah, she is fascinating. So I messaged her. I said, "Hey, I just heard you on the podcast." That's the one thing with the podcast world. Uh, it, there's a time lag, right? Yes. Because I told her I wish her all the best, and she said the the race ended a few weeks ago, and I came <laughs> fourth. <laughs> That's right. It was yeah. one of those uh, uh, those podcasts that I needed to put out right away because it was timely. Yeah, yeah. But you're doing an amazing job. Uh, you were doing group interviewing, right? And you did a great job. Like, well done. I'm guessing it well, was challenging you. to get all those people, right? Well, that's the most fun for me. Uh, the probably the I haven't done that many podcast episodes in in total, but um, probably the fourth one was with the whole company. Yeah. I just went into their office, and everybody just gathered round, and then anybody could answer whatever questions they wanted. Yeah, it's like you're the. It was a lot ninja. of fun. Yeah, it's like a ninja podcaster. Ciao, you know, just one after the <laughs> next. Love it, love it. So, who did you learn that skill from? That skill of um of of communicating on that level. Well, communicating on that level uh, probably comes from me being a musician, mm. and so performing for the last twenty years. Uh, when I started writing, it, it I, I didn't realize I could write, but then it just made so much sense when somebody said podcast and. And I'm like, well, I'm yeah, I'm already a performer. I have the equipment. I basically write as I speak. Hmm. So why not speak? Yeah, love it, love it, love that you took the jump to uh, to be able to to pivot, if you would, right? Um, why will you continue despite the challenges that that could occur? Well, I still have a lot to say. Uh, so uh, the podcast is almost necessary now for me because I'm I'm just starting now to tell my story, my and and my. My story is uh, of a, a long addiction uh, to gambling and then the recovery from that and also the mental health issues that came along with that. So as, as well as helping people with the personal finances and helping them get out of uh, trouble if they are in trouble, uh, I want to just share my story and, and everybody else's story. Hmm, that's amazing. Uh, Bo, so much of what I've been able to accomplish now uh, stems from approaching my personal finances in a way that was a, a bit different but intentional and i think i think i too as an entrepreneur made some gambles because when you when you're making decisions on, with your finances based on i think this will be good or yes this will be good and it's really a and and i'm talking and thinking about it not to want to speak too much, but just to the idea of how many entrepreneurs are gambling. Yeah, you know, I, I think th- there's a there's a way to, to gamble being an entrepreneur without taking a risk. And, and you can do a lot of research. You can also save up a bunch of money so that if you do, uh, if you do end up failing, which a lot of entrepreneurs do, and it's a good thing because you learn, you're not uh, using all of the money, say, you were saving for retirement. Yeah. 
which is so important because the mental side of it then isn't impacted as 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 much as it could be just with the the just with the mere fact of failing right but when you yes. fail and then the money part is then now, gone oh my now you have all this debt and and maybe no plan to repay it so you have to take a job you don't like and and it just kind of spirals from there you're you're uh you're not a living a happy life anymore because you know it maybe wasn't the best decision right so when i decided to quit my job uh, a couple of months ago uh, I did it after saving up a lot of money hmm. so that, you know, yeah, well, thank you. So that I, I wouldn't be basically throwing myself into the fire or having to make decisions that weren't uh, aligned with uh, the path that I want to be on, which is really creativity. I think I think everyone should have a chance to be creative. Yeah, love that. Well, tell me one other thing that you've done consistently over the last three years, please. Uh, something that I've done uh, consistently is uh, uh, playing uh, music. I, I I, I play uh, for weddings and uh, uh, corporate events, uh, kind of big, uh, big party events with my band. And uh, uh, that's something that I'm glad that I've kept up because you build these talents when you're younger. And then a lot of people just sort of go off on their other career, say, you know, or their desk job and they forget about their uh, musical ability or, or the artistry or, or writing or even storytelling. And I'm really glad that I kept up with that. What's the main instrument that you play or love to play? I play keys. Okay. So I, I've always uh, been a, a keyboard player, uh, classically trained in piano. But when it came to playing in the band, uh, that helped only just a little bit because it's uh, it's not like playing Mozart, right? Yeah. Well, you definitely have the here for the guitarist role, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah. Uh, they say that I, I don't look like a, well, when I was working in accounting, I don't look like an accountant. <laughs> So you've done the podcasting and you've done the music side of life. How does it make you feel? Uh, it's, it, it feels great. You know, it, it feels like this is where I'm supposed to be whenever I meet somebody. I was just at a, a, a conference in Dallas, uh, FinCon. Um, Jessica was there as well. She was the, one of the speakers, actually. And I just met people. And when you say, hey, I want you to be on my podcast, everyone's like, yeah, that sounds great because everyone just wants to communicate and I want to share everything that's out there. Mm -hmm. So I just, I feel really good writing uh, and blogging and podcasting. Mm -hmm. So there's possibly someone listening to this conversation that's in the park or that's uh, on their way um, to work uh, to that same place that you've left now, uh, thinking about how they could do what you've done. Why would you suggest to them firstly that they should even consider doing what you've done, specifically the lineup of getting your finances in order to do the thing you love? Yeah, so that's the first thing is, is make sure you save some money first. Um, you know, you don't have to uh, have a replacement income to, to take a chance. Sometimes you know that it's, it's the right time, but if you're at least able to save money to live on while you're trying to build that full time, that's almost the same as, as building up uh, an income stream first before quitting your job. And, and that's what I did. And, you know, always, um, make a decision that, that you're really interested in, like, you know, do something first. It might not be making money, but maybe you'll get some traffic. Maybe you'll get some followers on social media. And then that'll give you the indication that this is the way uh, that you want to go. So that's what I would say. Just, you know, think about what it is you really want to do. And if it's what you're doing now, fine. But if it's not, you know, think about other options. Amazing audience, we are live with Bo Humphreys. He is the podcast host of the Personal Finance Show podcast. Do check that out. Amazing stuff going on there. But Bo, let's switch gears for a moment and let me invite you into my time machine that is surrounded with beautiful, warm, blue Caribbean water. Bo, what is your earliest childhood memory? I was thinking about this and uh, I don't have a lot of memories, but I do remember winning... Um, in school, I think it was about eight, uh, the gi there's this giant uh, Papa Smurf doll. Do you remember the Smurfs? Yeah. The, the, the little blue things? Well, this one was the same size as me. And I just remember taking this thing home, and it basically it was a, as tall as I was. And I know that I kept that, that big stuffed doll forever. And, and mm -hmm. I, I don't remember even what the competition was for, but uh, I remember Papa Smurf. Interesting. So how old do you think you were? Uh, yeah, probably somewhere between 8 and 10, All but right, yeah, right. probably around there. 
Why do you think this memory is so clear? I don't know. It, it it's uh I just felt so good about well maybe it was winning but also just this prize was like it was like a giant prize and is something <laughs> something tangible yeah. that, that I could take home. I just liked I liked it a lot. I liked the Smurfs too uh, at the time. I still I guess I still do. Yeah, you definitely. So can I offer an interpretation to the thought picture you created in my mind? Absolutely. I love the idea of the Smurf representing the man the magic. Sorry. Right, as well as there's a lot of music with the Smurfs, right? Like they were always singing yeah. and happy and jolly, right? That's well, right. I think <laughs> it's happiness. Yeah. Yeah, it's really the happiness, right? And it's intriguing too the way you've incorporated blue in so many of your things. Even the like I'm looking here on LinkedIn right now, and there's a blue thingy. Invest wisely. What is this? Yeah, everything. <laughs> my it's a, well, my owl. Uh, yeah, so yeah. I I had somebody design it for like five dollars on Fiverr. And because I wanted a, a icon of my own, it's before I started using my picture, and uh, the owl it just it seems just it's wise, but it's also kind of nice looking. And the, you're right, the blues, blue is my color. I'm wearing a blue shirt in my profile. You are, you oh, are. <laughs> so that's, that's that's pretty intriguing how it connects. And then the idea as well as um, putting in the work and being able to take home the prize and taking home something that is well as as permanent as could be you know it, it wasn't temporary it was it was now yours and i think with your finances and helping others to achieve that freedom if you would um it's theirs it and it's really a grand skill to attain managing your personal finances so it's fascinating it really that you're connecting others with that yes and and i know it it's not the easiest thing i mean i i learned a lot when i i went through in near bankruptcy and uh, had to live on cash and and you know it's uh, it, everybody needs a little bit of help and that's so I, I just want to help people when they need it oh, that was wonderful well done boy boy if we fast forward to when you were 12 years old what was your favorite song uh, yeah, i thought about this one too and i i was pretty into the east coast family you know boys to men uh bell biv devoe yeah that kind of thing so i think motown philly uh by, by boys to men that was probably you know early 90s uh would have been my one of my favorite songs. Still is. Groovy. Extremely groovy too, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. The harmonies. I love harmonies. So. Yeah, you yeah, the keys guys. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That's great. All right, Bo. Well, hey, we've arrived at our destination, but before we get off of this time machine, there's a small declaration form, so it's yes or no, possibly a bit more. Are you ready, Bo? Ready. Bo, have you chosen someone to pass on your skills to? No. Are you married? I am. Do you have children? No children. Do you believe in God? No. Do you have an inner circle of friends? Yes. Do you watch TV for more than three hours a day? Oh, yeah. How about, oh, he said yes. I actually thought it would be <laughs> no. Yeah, you got me. Uh, what about screen time, the phone and or the computer? Is it more than eight or less than eight hours a day? I, I spend all day. So all day on all the screens. All right, all right. After 1001 Conversations in three months in 2016, came up with a workbook. The name of it is called Yours. Stands for your own unique real self. The idea is you answer these questions and you uncover your own unique real statement, your mission. If you had to share with us, Bo, your own unique real statement, the statement that represents Bo Humphreys. What would you say that is? I would say uh, to not be afraid of change because I, I was afraid, uh, you know, I had attention deficit disorder. I still do, but it's medicated. And so uh, fear can just drive you into the places you don't want to be. And so, you know, try to figure out what it is that's holding you back. And uh, don't be afraid to take a chance because the worst that could happen is you learn a little bit about yourself. Hmm. Love it. Bo Humphreys, this was a great pleasure. Before you leave, is there anything else you'd like to share with our amazing audience? Yeah, you know, I just I wanted to say that, uh, you know, money problems aren't usually about money. You know, a lot of people might try to um, fix the money. You know, maybe if they get a gift from someone, oh, that'll fix everything. But usually if you're in trouble like I was, you know, I couldn't fix gambling by gambling more. I had to figure out what was wrong with me. What was my issue that needed to be fixed that was causing all of these problems? And so if you're having trouble, think about what else might be causing it and, and don't just focus on the money. Bo Humphreys, again, great pleasure. Thank you for being on What is Inspired by 12-Minute Convos with Angel Jones. Thank you. Thank you for being on 12-Minute Convos with Angel Jones. Stay tuned for more from our advertisers. Diabetes is a mountain pandemic, 
It's a disease that's not acute but chronic. Similar to this rhyming method, I have simplified the definition, the signs and symptoms, and the complications of diabetes for both adults and children in my books, Poems for Patients, A Focus on Diabetes, and The ABCs of Diabetes for Children. These books are available on Amazon.com, and for more information, you can visit my website, poemsbyag.com. That's poemsbyag.com.